Okay, now this entry here talks about accruing interest at year end. So what happened is that we usually journalize this entry if, sorry, we usually journalize this entry if certain notes carries on to the following accounting period. So what this means is that if, let's say, we sign off a note December 1st this year, 2013, and this is a note that has a time frame of six months. So we'll carry on to the following accounting period. So keep in mind that at this year end, we always need to do this year's financial statements. Okay, interest, the concept is that interest is constantly rolling as time passes by. It doesn't really have a specific date to say that this is the total amount of interest that accumulates. Really is rolling as each and every day goes by. So this journal entry here captures the fact that when it gets to the end of the year, before financial statements, we always want to recognize the part of interest that is considered interest receivable to your company. Okay, just like accounts receivable, this is a cash collection later on, interest receivable is also a cash collection that you'll be getting next year. Okay, so this case here, this example, assuming that we signed a one-year note, $1,000, borrowed 1000 to others, signed this note December 30th. Since this is a one-year note, it carries on to the following years, September 30th, right? So when it gets to December, we want to capture the time frame, the interest that has accumulated starting from September 30th all the way to December, the end. So that will give you to October, to November, to December, three months of interest to accumulate here. Okay, so this $1,000 times yearly interest rate 6%, we want to time the time frame three months over 12 and journalize this accrual interest entry. So accrued means the accumulated interest entry. This is the interest that we recognize as interest revenue in this accounting season because we signed the note this year. So we signed a note three months before. We only captured three months of interest here. Not the whole thing, okay, only three months. The lifetime of this note, again, is a year. What we're trying to do here is capture this part of the interest that has accumulated as time goes by for three months starting from September 30th all the way to December 31st. So there's three months of interest that belongs to, that is considered as interest revenue, interest receivable, belongs to 2014, and there's nine months that belongs to 2015. Okay, we only journalize this entry in this case when there's a note that passes on, carries on, and it crosses two different accounting periods. In case that an entire note falls under this entire period, then we don't have to journalize this at year end. Okay, later on I will talk about an example uh, for cases that falls only into one accounting period. So basically this is sort of like an adjusting entry. So remember adjusting entries we talked about in chapter three? At year end, before financial statements, we always want to make sure that all the accounts are up to date. So in terms of notes, we want to make sure interest is also captured in financial statements. Okay, so in a way, you can think of this as an interest adjustments. So we sign off a note September. We recognize three months of interest that has accumulated in this year. But this is not an interest that we collected from debtor yet. So this is considered interest receivable. All right, so what happens later on when it gets to 2015, September, when this note is 